Hey guys, welcome to Talking Strongman. This week's guest is the 1991 World Strongest Man runner-up, Henning Thorson from Denmark. Henning, it's great to have you on. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm glad you're here. Um, how's things with you? Are you? What have you been up to recently? And recently, I've gone back to powerlifting. I actually did that many years ago when I became a master. When I stopped doing my strongman, I did some track and fields and some even played some American football. Actually, I've been part of the team that won the American and the Danish championship in, I don't remember, 19, sometimes in the 2000s or something like that. Really? I had, I had no idea. I've actually been Danish champion in American football as well. So I've done a lot of difference. You're a Danish champion in American football, yeah, in I strongman, was. in powerlifting. Yes. Anything else? <laughs> I believe I was master's champion one year in uh, Chuck Wow. So that, that, that's a hell of a, an athletic career there. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of different sports, yes. Well, you are... lately, lately, for the last yeah, 10 years, when I decided when I stopped strongman, when I was going to get a master two at 50 years, I would start competing in powerlifting again. Wow. So I did that, and then I have been Danish champion a lot of times in Masters, and I don't know if you're aware of it, but in 2019, the year I turned 60, I was world champion in powerlifting Masters. That's amazing. I, I, I didn't know. I'm, a, I'm actually the ruling world champion Master 3 in the plus 120 kilo class Masters, because That's there was no awesome. competition in 20. <laughs> well, yeah, there was competition. I'm still, I'm still doing a bit. So you're still training hard now? I'm not not that hard, but yeah, I'm, I'm lifting about approximately half of what I did when I was younger. That's one of the one of the I guess the the side effects of having your prime, you know, back in the day. But it's great yeah. to see you still lifting. I, I didn't know at all because um, you know you you had a great career in strongman. You came obviously second to to Magnus Ver in 1991. You, yeah, were, that was I think, a big disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I, I really expected to win that one, but. I think he um, he's disappointed a lot of men. That man, he's um, yeah, did, he, yeah. he really is a legend. But yeah. you know, you, you you came second to him. I think you're also fourth and sixth at World's Strongest Man. Is that correct? Yeah, I was fourth in ninety and sixth in ninety two. That's pretty impressive. I participated yeah. three times. Yeah, but I, I'm but, guessing you competed a lot in other shows as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of shows. There was. European muscle power championships, the world muscle power championships. We were in Canada one year for competing over there. And yeah, a lot of shows. And well, I, I want to talk, I want to talk about like your powerlifting that you're doing now. But I want what what I tend to do with with these is kind of go back to the start. And obviously, yeah. I mean, for someone that's done so well in the sport, you're not the most well known out of the guys. I mean, if we look at some of the guys you competed with, you competed against Herrick Badenhorst, against you know Magnus Ver Magnussen, Gary Taylor, Ted Vanderpaar, some of these you know big names, and and you've beaten all these guys. So I want to sort of you know. I'm sure there's older fans that are watching that remember all these shows, but I, I like to bring some of the old guys back for the newer fans to see as well, to go back and watch and, and learn from, from the people that paved the way. So I want to, I want to take you back to what first got you into strength training or, or in the gym in general, take me back to the very beginning and where you sort of got that love for, for lifting. Yeah. Well, I, I'm working, I was working at that time when I was young, 18, 19 years as a construction worker. It was quite heavy work. And then one day, me and my older brother, we talked about starting doing some weightlifting because he was also working in the business. And then we started, I think, at the age of 18 or 19. We joined the local gym and started lifting. My brother stopped after a year or two. He couldn't take it. His back was too sore. But I kept on lifting. So I've been lifting weights since 1978, I believe. Wow. Or 77. I think I was just turned 18. So it's about... 78, the spring 78, I started lifting. And you're still lifting now. That's that's incredible. Still lifting weights, yeah. Still enjoying doing it. I've been doing it all the time, no matter what kind of sports I've been doing, I've still been lifting my weights. Yeah. And then I started lifting, and then in 1979, I believe we had a competition, just a little competition, the first one in Denmark at all in powerlifting. Because I went in the club where Helen Jim where I was training, we had every year at Christmas we had a competition in powerlifting. And then there came a guy from another part of Denmark who said they had the same in his club. Then we made a competition with three different clubs meeting. And then 
half year later, we made an unofficial Danish championship where there came some more clubs from around. And then in 1982, I was one of the founders. I was at the first meeting where we did the founding of the Danish Powerlifting Federation. That's incredible. And I was in 19, I was Danish champion in 82, 83, unofficial. 84, we had the first official championships, which I also won in the heavyweight competition class. It was plus 125 at that time. I believe I weighed about 130. I was not that big then. Then it went on, and in 89, I believe, I met John Paul. There was already in 84, there was also, 83 was the first Danish championship, about 84, there was the first Danish strongman competition, Denmark strongest man, where I was invited as an outsider because nobody knew me, and they needed a competitor, and I won it. So you I, won? <laughs> I won it, yeah. And then in, ahead of the old legendary Sven Ole Thorsen from Denmark, was this you know, an old actor and had a lifter. So he was, they were a bit surprised. I came in from the right and just won it's, the it's, it's amazing how many of the, you know, how many of the top guys do that, though? They, they, they sort of turn up to a show and they win, and no one's ever heard of them. It, yeah. it's, I've, I've spoken to so many of the guys, you know, I can, you know, even the modern guys, I think you need that, you know, that, yeah. that natural talent to, yeah. to be that good, especially as a super heavyweight, I think. It's, super heavyweight, you have to be able to work, you have to be used to use your body in different ways than just, just lifting weights. Yeah. Because but I know a lot of people who are very good at lifting weights and they lift much more kilos than I can. Also when we were young, I had a, a guy in Denmark, then he could squat more than 400 kilos and I could squat 320, 340 at a good day. But I still beat him in strongman with no problem. Yeah, strongman is very different to powerlifting. I think a lot of people forget that. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, now we got these guys doing ridiculous numbers in deadlifts and stuff. But there's been some incredible powerlifters that don't necessarily do well in strongman competitions. And, you know, vice versa, you get some great strongman that, that can't bench 400 pounds, you know, can't bench 180 kilos. But they're great athletes. They move well. They're, they're two different sports. Although there's crossover, and I think most strongmen are going to be decent deadlifters and squatters, there's still different differences between the two. I think believe all of us at the job have been decent at the all when you think lifting everything. But normal power lifters are not very good at shoulder lift and all that and overhead lift. Yeah. They're not very good at lifting something up and run. Most of us who have done very well have still been able to run. Yeah. And do a lot of that. That's important for strong man, that fitness. I mean, I was watching the 91 World Strongest Man a few weeks ago, actually, and that started off with a, a real fitness event, you know, yeah. the, um, the loading back then. That they were, I mean, it wasn't the heaviest things in the world, but they were challenging and awkward. Uh, people were lifting. That was actually one of my regrets because I believed that was more difficult, so I took it too easy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so that was very regretful. So that's that's easy to see afterwards. It's always one of those things. I think we can all look back and and say what if, but yeah, yeah, but you, know, you still the 90, 91 when I was second. I won three events and Magnus won three, but there was two of my worst events at all. If you go to a static hold, I can never done that. Never been very good at that. Is that the uh, the crucifix hold? Yeah, the, crucifix yeah. Or whatever. It's static. I, I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the stamina for for crucifix for static hold, and I. Truly did a lot of training on the static, but it didn't move as much as a second. You can do it or you can't do it. It is a strange event. I know I know people that can train it and train it and train it, and it doesn't matter. And other people, they don't train it at all, and they're good at it. You do it for a minute or two. Yeah. I love in 30 seconds. Like, so. I knew what? that when I saw the competition the events. I knew there would be problems there, but... One thing that um, you know, I noticed with that company, you won the Atlas Stones against all these yeah. these you know. I big it wasn't really Atlas Stones. The old stones were named McLashen. The McLashen Stones. That's special correct. Old stone. It was made of a special kind of sandstone. Yeah. They're a lot bigger. If you took the biggest of the McLashen, it actually only weighed about one forty kilo. Yeah. But... So big, so I couldn't even get my hands around it. I think I, I missed about 20, 30 centimeters. Were you guys so allowed to use very, tacky back then? They were very very difficult to handle. I was just saying, were you allowed to use like the, the tacky? Yeah, yeah you know, tacky or rubber band or whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I didn't they, use any of that. I just grabbed them. But I was used to, when I was a big boy, I was working in the farmland, so I was used to grabbing everything and moving it. 
you could tell that watching i mean it's hard to tell when we're sat down like this but i know you're you're a, i mean in your prime you were a really big guy it was you're about six foot four six foot three four about that yes okay and, and what did you weigh i was 155 kilo which back then was big yeah i was one of the biggest it's, it's only old you wins and last thing until damien weighed the same as i did yeah we were the biggest wow <laughs> It's, um, so when we, I mean, you, you said you met Jean Paul Sigmundson and that kind of. Yeah, we had some into... different kind of Denmark Strongest Man competition. There was some year where there were no done. And then we want to revive it. Some of the people I knew that I arranged it in 89, and they invited John Paul over for a referee. And he made, uh, at already the first time we met, we were very good friends. And he made contact with Douglas Edmonds, who was arranging a lot of things in Scotland. The old, the, the part of, Douglas, who also ended up being a very dear friend. And then he, um, John Paul made contact and told Douglas there was a good man in Denmark, he should try off. And I went to Scotland and participated. In, we had some Highland games and something. And the first competition, real strongman competition, I participated over there was a European strongman competition. And a European, what's it called? European, the muscle power? European muscle power, yeah. And I won it. You won that as well. <laughs> the first international I ever was in. Who was who was in that show? Oh, William Magnus was Yelt, Ted. Magnus Ver, Ted, Ted Van der Paar. Ted Van der Paar and a few other guys. So, some, some, guys. so yeah. some big, big names, and you've gone there. Yeah. And I you won just that kicked... one. The first one. <laughs> Brilliant. That was funny. That's, so then that's... I was, as soon as I accepted as one of the group, then I participated in many different competitions in Scotland and Canada, as I say. And then in 1990, I was in the World Muscle Power in Glasgow, I believe it was. I didn't re I didn't re remember that it was World Muscle Power. I believe it called Scottish Power in London because the Scottish Power company was, was yeah. uh, sponsoring it. So I think it was, was it you or was it Mark who rem told me it was actually World Power in Probably Mark. He 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 knows everything. <laughs> that guy. He knows everything about this. Yeah, he even knows things. He knows a lot of things. If I, I if him. if I put something on on YouTube and it's wrong, Mark, yeah, this, yeah. this guy Mark Williams, he he knows yeah. he's like an encyclopedia yeah. for strongman. Yeah. He's like, no no no, Loz, that was wrong. <laughs> but um, because on Wikipedia it says that you won Europe's strongest man. Is that true? It's not right. Okay. It was a European Muscle Power Championship. Yeah. And Mark yeah. has just told me recently that there was actually also a Europe's strongest man that year. I didn't even know that. I think back then it was different, though. It wasn't like um, now where we've got, you know, competitions each year that, that follow. It was it was all different. Obviously, World's Strongest Man was was the main show, but then there was just lots of people putting on shows, I guess, which I isn't that, that much different now, to be honest, but there seems to be a lot more consistency with the shows that are... That are... Just remember, I was told that it was a competition that was counted as the World's Strongest Man that year. It was a European muscle bar. Well, so the thing... Like, it, it would have had all the top guys in. It was you know. a top guy in there, yes. Yeah. Well, it's all right. It doesn't matter. The title don't. I don't care about the title. I just want well, you've you've won to plenty win. of titles, to be fair. I mean, what is it, six times uh, Danish champion? Yeah, I believe it's... don't really remember. We, we'll ask Mark. <laughs> He'll tell us. Five or six times. I think 1992 was the last time I won or something. I don't remember. It's Five still... or six times. That's still not bad at all. <laughs> no, and it was from my first win was in '84, and my last win was in '92, and there was three years with no competition. So I won all the all the Danish Denmark strongest man I was participating in. I won in that period. Wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually been quite a few good Danish strongmen as well. Yeah, uh, been... you've had some some really good guys over the years. Mm. Well, same like Round and Fleming, who came yeah. after. He came first in the year where there were two world strongest men. He won one of them. Yes. Yeah. 23. That's been a good. It has been good. Just to brag a little bit, Fleming, he contacted me after I stopped in 1992, I believe, 1991, and asked me how I did my training because he was ready to give up. Then I gave him my program, my training program, how I did it. He used most of it and used a lot of it, and then he next year was the second in the world's strongest man. So yeah, he was he was very strong. He was very strong, very really big. He was a lot bigger than I was. 
so talk, talking of training, what kind of training did you do back then for, for when, you, when you were preparing for a show like World's Strongest Man, for instance? I did a lot of weight training, of course. Sports. I was doing a lot of overhead lifts. I did a lot of running. I know I didn't look like a runner, but I did a lot of running. Would you so, running? Would running have been long distance or more sprint? No, 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 mostly sprint. Yeah, sprint running and doing some. Yeah, I did not I had a good field where I was living, so I did a lot of caper tossing and weights for height and all different kind of things. I had some stones to throw around with, but I mean, my main training basis was powerlifting. Yeah, and then combined with a lot of overhead lift. I think combining, you know, the powerlifting type training with some overhead and then some general conditioning, yeah. fitness, event type training. Yeah, but not that much. Not that much because back in the old days, it was mainly strong. You have to be strong because in the early 90s, mid 90s, it was getting more like fitness. The only thing we really had where you had to run was, of course, you had to be good fitness to do the powerhead, the truck pot, truck pool. At the loading events, there was always some kind of loading event. Yeah, when you when you see strongman now, would you have liked to have tried some of the different types of competitions? Like you know, now we have the Arnold's, for instance, which is a much heavier contest than say World's Strongest Man. Would you have preferred those type of shows, or did you like the athletic side of, of World's Strongest Man? Mm, I don't know if I like. I did like the athletic as well, but I also enjoyed the lifting. I always been that's probably why I'm still lifting. Because I, do, I do like to lift everything, but then from as a kid, I've always been competing with my brothers and my cameras, but we were going to lift as heavy as possible. So I, I believe, but when that said, I can truly say that the strong men today are much stronger than any of us in the back days. Oh, the standard now is crazy, but I mean, there's there's guys back then, and what you guys did was different as well. You know, maybe... Our deadlifts are bigger now, but it's not. It's all on different bars, different equipment. I mean, just watching the ninety-one world strongest man. You did the eighteen-inch deadlift, but there was no straps allowed, so it was all on, on grip strength, and that makes a big difference. You know, it's a very it, big difference, I it, it, it would bring our numbers down. I mean, just as a, as an example, I've I've deadlifted four hundred and thirty-five kilos in a strongman competition, but yeah. my best in powerlifting is only three hundred and eighty-five. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big difference in terms of what I've been able to pull in powerlifting and in strongman because there's a, a certain standard that you lift to in powerlifting. Obviously, you know, a strongman. There's so many different challenges, which is what I love about it. But I think um, you know, it's it's fun just getting under a heavy bar and squatting and deadlifting and bench pressing. You know, overhead pressing. I think we all like to challenge ourselves, and obviously yeah. the standard gets better. You know, the new guys in ten years' time, God knows what they're they're going to be lifting. But tell us, tell us what your best powerlifting numbers were. My best powerlifting numbers back in the day. The heaviest deadlift I've been doing was three fifty. I've been squatting three forty two and a half competition, and two thirty seven and a half bench. And that's all all, all raw. That's raw. Yeah. So they they we had some kind of shirt, some no shirts, but we had some kind of sleeve and a, what you call it. the the um, singlets, bigger knee bands, and but nothing like what they have today. Yeah, it's a big difference. Oh, it does. We, 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 we are normally counting 10, 20 kilos more when we put the equipment on. That's so all. Sure. It was basically raw. Yes. What's your what? my highest number I had in in strongman competition? We had one called the Hercules in Denmark. Where we had some kind of big bombs with a uh, bar on. I did a lift on 495 just from below the knees. Yeah. So these reps. So, but I was also bending a lot that bar. So yeah. actually, when I was lifting the bomb, I was thinking about 10, 15 centimeters from the outer edge to the so, that's why it's why it's good i think to see the numbers in like a, a stricter powerlifting federation that, that gives a better understanding of the strength yeah. levels of different guys because even some of the powerlifting federations now with the the whippier bar and stuff like that it all allows a lifter to lift a little bit more if you use like a stiff bar and you know proper calibrated plates if anyone can i say this a lot but if anyone can pull 400 kilos in a powerlifting comp on a stiff bar they are a seriously strong deadlifter. That's they definitely no straps. Strong, yeah. There's a big difference between doing that and pulling 400 
on a on a like a Texas power bar with straps in in a suit and stuff. And I'm not saying that's not strong. It's a great lift to do 400 kilos, but it's understanding there is a difference. That's all I'm trying to uh, get across when I explain that to people. Yeah, I believe that as well. It's so more te- easy to, to compare the, the kilos when it's in powerlifting. Definitely. Sure. So what was your what was your favorite events when you were competing? So, my pleasant stone was absolutely my love, most loved, but that was mainly because I was one of the best. That always helps. <laughs> I was the best. Yeah, my, you were. In my time, there was nobody near me. And then we had the farmer war. I believe one of the only guys who could beat me at the farmer war was John Paul. Then late years, we had Rico Kio. He is also fantastic in the group. I believe my, my group was one of the best in the world. I it's, believe that. Yeah. Did so you ever do the group events I was doing also when we had some competition in Denmark? Actually, after I stopped international in 93, I competed some years in Denmark just for fun, some local competition and so on. And whenever there's a group event, the others are just, you know, I think it's going to win it because I knew I had twice as much time in the group of windows they had. That's the, the best feeling when your opponents know you're going to win an event. Yeah, definitely. You can yeah. see it in their face. They're like, ah, oh, there's no point in pushing harder because he's going to do better. Yeah. I remember <laughs> one year when I was really pissing them off because we were doing a farm work. Well, it wasn't that heavy. I think about 100 kilos in each hand with handles. I did it backwards and beat them all. <laughs> you did it backwards? Yeah. <laughs> That's just taking the mick out of them there. <laughs> that really is. Uh, so maybe, what was it yeah. what was it like competing against, you know, the I mean, do you, do you follow the sport now? You still I mean you said you still live, you love powerlifting. Do you still follow strongman? Um, once in a while I watch yes, but not, not as much because I don't know why really. But after I left it I just yeah, just that was it, it was over. Yeah. It was part of my life. And that's also you started talking about why I wasn't as I don't want to call it famous or as well known as all the others because when John Paul died in '93, I lost it. He was you a lost- very close friend, very close friend. And then you- I just lost the eager for it. And there's coming a lot of new guys in. And I know a lot of people who think I'm an idiot for saying this, but suddenly it was mostly for money. He were competing. Yeah. And the old days, me, John Paul, Jamie, we had so much fun all the time. And so if I won or John Paul won or Jamie won, we were just the same friends. Anyhow, we went out eating and having a few beers and having some fun. And it didn't really matter who won. We all wanted to win, don't we? Sure. I, th- I think every athlete wants to win. That's understandable. Win. Yeah. And we knew each other so well in the top five, ten guys there. So when we came to a competition and we saw the e- events, then we knew at least the top three would be. There's no doubt because we knew each other so well. So. And then when John Paul died and O.D. Wilson half a year before so was also a very good friend and I simply lost the, the ego for doing it. Sure. So I stopped doing it. Yeah, it must have been... I think it's tough when you are so close with these people. Did you ever go and train with Jean-Paul? Oh, yeah, a lot of times. When I was first meeting Jean-Paul back in 89, it was with World Strongest Man in 1990, and I was actually there as a reserve. And then Kashmir decided not to compete. And then I was suddenly in the competition. I think I was almost in Finland and they told me I had to compete. <laughs> I put in as a reserve and a tester together with the Gelti. So, that went all right. And then yeah. I was in the competition. But then we went to Canada in 91, was it? Yes, I the young spring, 91. Yeah, had some competitions yeah. well, together with Jamie and John Paul and Magnus. And we were di- discussing training methods because I bragging about I couldn't get any stronger. I was just about locked no matter how much I did training or how I did I didn't get stronger. Then John Ball and Jay and Magnus told me how they were doing their program. And then I changed it when I get home and after half a year I was about fifteen percent stronger in all wow. my life. I was That's simply training too much. It's it's amazing, I think, how... And it's very similar still now. I think the guys all kind of give each other advice and yeah. try and help each other. And it's that's how the sport is, is evolving still. Yeah. And I think now it's accelerated because of things like social media. So people can see things like you wouldn't have had that luxury. You know, you wouldn't have been able to just put the, you know, turn your phone on or turn your computer on and get all this information about how to train and what the other guys are doing. Yeah, mobile phones back then. <laughs> Obviously, but um, you know, it's nice to know that you guys all helped each other and passed information. 
all the way to we were very very close friends would you, would you go to Iceland then to, to train with Jean-Paul or did he come over to train with you both I was in Iceland a few times but he was a, quite often in Denmark actually and then he was always staying by my place I mean, he's he's such a, a legend in strongman, and I think it's you know it's a regret of mine that I never got to to meet him. What what was he like? You know, as a he was a gentleman, full gentleman. He could get away with everything because he was so charming. Because yeah. I never met anybody like him. He was always in good mood and having. He was always he was always a funny guy to be with. Definitely, he was he was the best. Simply, he was he's, the best. He was the best. The best in the world you could find to sell the sport. He seemed like just a, a really incredible kind of positive person to be around. One of the things that, you know, just as a fan watching, I remember watching him do a truck pull yeah. and the harness broke. Now, a lot of people, when a, something like, you know, if there's an equipment malfunction, we'll be like, oh, fuck, you know, this is, you know, you're trying to focus on, and he would just take it in his stride. He'd be like, too powerful, and just kind of, you know, he would yeah. he would always be positive no matter what happened, which I think is an amazing trait to have. It was so cool to watch him. I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm envious of, of people like yourself that got to train with him because it would have been so cool to still see him around. And Actually, because of John Paul, I was some, um, World strongest man competition from earlier before I started myself. That was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to start in strong. I was really, I was really pleased when he came to Denmark and I got the chance to start in strong man back then. It must have been so nice to to see this strength legend and then just become good friends with him as well. Yeah, we're just clicking right away, we were talking and everything. That's fantastic. So who else out of the guys you competed on against were were you close with? Definitely. It would be Odie Wilson because he was a very nice guy as well. He was and probably a lot of Americans gonna hate me now, but he was not a typical American. Okay. He was an honest, good man who really was got feeling and all wanted the best for everybody else. And he never lied about what he could lift. No, he seemed very genuine. He didn't lie about it. So he didn't need to lie about it. He was a beast. <laughs> he was the first man who was a was quite far fifty. So, <laughs> you, you, when you're lifting those numbers, you don't need to lie. <laughs> that was a very big shock. He died shortly after we came home from Tenerife in '91. <coughs> that was a shock, but he was sick already in Tenerife. Yeah, you could tell he wasn't himself. Kind of when no. you you look back at that show, it's yeah. such yeah. a shame. Very uh, young. He was only forty when he died. Yeah, and that and obviously he had the shock with John Paul found out the reason he was dead was because he had a disease his father and his grandfather was dead off and nobody had checked it they tried it but I don't understand it what he had neither was a bit of medicine and he had still been alive it's crazy isn't it really crazy yeah so obviously though those things affected you in terms of your your passion for strongman oh yeah definitely what happened then you, you kind of stopped lifting completely or, or did you go to a different sport as Stop competing internationally. Okay. Just told them that I wouldn't do it. I was actually invited to the World Strongest in '93. But then there was another guy, Henry Graham, who won the '93 event, which I organized. And that was probably why I lost it. I don't take anything from him. He's a strong guy. He did very well. And it was stupid of me to think I could both organize and compete in a competition. Sure. So he won it by half a point. And then I told doctors that I couldn't compete because I wasn't the strongest man. And then I sent him against it. Wow. A lot of people wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that shows the, the class of yourself to, to put the guy that placed above you to go ahead. I, I know plenty of guys that, you know, if they got an invite and someone beat them in their national competition, they'd still take that invite. So yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. I couldn't live with myself if I did that. That, that shows. I would be there on the false percent. I wouldn't do that. So that, that yeah, I didn't do it, and him I did very well. I think yeah. he was in it for two years, and then Fleming came. So you said to me earlier, you went on to do some like um, throwing events. You did shot put. Yeah, I did some shot put and some hammer throwing. Just for the fun of it, I always thought I should try it. I was never in the top class, far from, far from. But I was about when I was about forty. No, it's 35 actually. They started at a, as a master at a veteran in Adelaide, okay. Triangle. So I started competing there, and I believe one 
one of the years that he wins the Danish championship. I think it was about 40 years or something. Uh, I was even, I'm, I'm even, I'm even educated as a referee in track and field. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did it for some years. And then That's when cool. I discovered American football, I started up in Denmark and where I lived, the little town, there was actually a local team playing. So I thought it would be fun. I was about 40 at that time. You started playing American football at 40? Yeah, I started at 40. And then that's, I went that's nuts. <laughs> immediately at the, front, at the first team, played centre for many years. And then we moved to another town. There was a, a much bigger team that had been Danish champions many years ago. And they were playing now. And then I started there. And immediately I went on to the first team and started playing some national matches there. And I stopped at the age of 50. Do you think, so you'd have, you'd have 10 years of, of American football, 40 to 50. Do you think yeah. if you knew about American football when you were younger, you would have pursued, pursued that over, say, powerlifting and strongman? No, because when I was younger, when I started lifting, I was the same height as now, as, as now, as about six, six feet four. I weighed 78 kilo. Oh, <laughs> okay. I doubled my body weight during my training. That's incredible. Because you, 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 you said you got up to like 155 kilos? Yeah. That was my heaviest weight. Wow. So tell us what your diet was like then to, to put that kind of weight on. Everything I could get no close to after <laughs> eat. Just about. Yeah. I had no specific diet. I just ate It was lot. just eat everything. Eat a hell of a lot, yeah. Always. And nothing specific. Wow. I just, I just didn't like vegetables at that time. <laughs> it was mainly bread and meat. And a lot of potatoes and pasta and rice. So I, I, I love hearing these stories because, you know, you talk to some some of the guys and they're just naturally big, strong guys to start with. And, you know, you hear something, you were, you were 75 kilos and you got up to... 78 kilos, yeah. But okay, 78 kilos. Very, very yeah. skinny. 78 kilos at six foot four. That is skinny. That's very skinny, yes. <laughs> probably the reason why I started doing some weightlifting. But it just shows that, the, you know... Time, you know, I'm sure it didn't happen overnight. It takes time. People have to understand that. Yeah, but take time, yeah, yes. That's that's incredible. There, there'll be a lot of people watching. You know, that kind of weight, thinking that they can't achieve anything in yeah, terms yeah. of strength. Just get started. It just takes some willpower. Yeah. You're doing it. So that's the only way you can get stronger. At one hundred percent, you just need to. You know, I I always tell people they should just be focused on themselves. Focus on your progress. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. But when you see people like yourself that have done that, it's very motivating for people. So, even it's, though I don't lift very heavy now compared to when I was young, I still enjoy lifting. So, I'm, still try, I'm still trying to improve, and I know I can't, but I'm still trying. <laughs> so, how often do you train now? It depends on the time, what I'm working with, and so when I try to get a, at the gym at three or four times a week. Yeah. But at the moment, with the corona around, it's very difficult because everything is closed. And sure. I had a, my home, we had we sold our home, our house last year. I had my own home gym, so that was no problem. But the place we have now is too small for a home gym. It stands out. My son has my home gym now. So does, your, does, you, does your son like lifting? Oh yeah, he's also a strong man, but only a bit national. He's he's about what, six foot seven, six or seven, but he only weighs one hundred five kilos, so he's also a skinny guy. But he's doing better than you were. He's... Pure muscles. <laughs> he's he's quite, looking good, is he? And he does some strongman for strong. Cool. Yeah. I think he was he was actually in London for a strongman last year just for fun. Really? Yeah. Was that um? I might have been refereeing that competition. There was yeah. a, a competition, London's Strongest Man. Yeah, I think it was that one he was participating in. Oh, uh, wow, I was the referee. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Tall guy. I remember seeing that. It's like a group of um, Danish guys came over. Yeah, so, he has an incredibly good build. Yeah, so like he, his dad. Yeah, he can normally win the Glib events. Brilliant. No, that's, that's amazing. So you, you're going you're gonna to do some more powerlifting competitions? I don't know. Right now I'm having a bad right shoulder it's doing some trouble I can't do much bends and I can't my biceps are almost disappeared because I can't do, do biceps so I expect to go to the doctor next week and get some I think I have some inflammation in it but yeah it's really bad but I don't know maybe maybe 
maybe I'll keep on training till I get 70 and then I'll go win the Master Four. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add another title to the, the collection. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Henning. It's been, you know, great you, to... In training, I was also to... Danish champion in powerlifting. Also, that was the only competition we had before Corona. It was a Danish championship. And then I won the Danish championship, Master Three. How many times have you been Danish champion then in powerlifting? <laughs> With different classes. 10, 12 times or something like that. <laughs> All the years I did strong when I didn't do powerlift. Sure. Because so you can't combine it. Then That's... I had some years with track and field, and then when I started again, I was 50. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe you did American football from 40 to 50 and yeah, then got into nice. back into powerlifting. That's, yeah. that's a really cool story. Just to keep in shape. Talk, talking to someone like yourself, it's it's good for me. I need I've I've needed that kick up the backside to to get back in. I'm still lifting. I'm just trying to be fitter and just yeah. enjoy training. But yeah. I think we're the type of people that always need something to compete in, just to light that fire, if you like, to really motivate us. So yeah, I've been gonna... for 42, 43 or forty two. Forty three years, yeah. I'm I still... I can, if I stop lifting weights, I'm gonna die, I think. I'm I'm still a novice compared to you, so I'm going to have to keep working hard. Yeah, let's keep on training the whole time. <laughs> I will do definitely. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a, a pleasure. Look after yourself, and um, I hope you do that. You know, a few more powerlifting competitions yet. I probably will. At least I'll do some Danish championships because uh, I can win them easy. <laughs> Good Maybe stuff. Because I'm the only one of you. <laughs> it it's a lot just. Easier. It, well, that, that's true, but don't don't tell everyone how many people turn up. Just tell them you're, you're the champ. Yes, <laughs> Henning, thank you so much for joining us. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this chat with Henning. We'll be back next week with more Talking Strongman. Take it easy. While you're here, guys, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my awesome strength content.